Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. There are fears tonight over how a critical and sudden water shortage in one of Tasmania's peak growing areas will affect jobs and the economy. Farmers have been told to cut their water usage in half, but producers are calling for more stability to protect development in the region. And in the short term, there's bad news for the summer ahead. The Coal River Valley is one of the state's well-known wine producing regions. It is also covered by the South East Irrigation Scheme, which has been hit with critical water shortages. Growers are um, really concerned about uh, the, the, the restrictions. Um, we, we're not that uh, affected in regards to having to put people off, but certainly our management strategies uh, uh, have changed. Producers say the last big wet here was in April 2018, so they're reliant on irrigation. Now due to low rainfall and reduced capacity of a Derwent Valley treatment plant, farmers in the scheme are being told to cut usage in half. Luckily for vineyards, established grapevines are less delicate than annual vegetables, but they fear the long-term impact on development in the region. Going into an enterprise, that is given a surety that you're going to have water, and then you know, this surety being broken um, is you know, devastating, really, really devastating. The weather outlook for coming months isn't looking good for our farmers. The Bureau of Meteorology releasing its summer outlook today, forecasting more dry conditions. It is looking like more average rainfall conditions, but cooler than average conditions uh, through the month. But as we head off into summer and into January and February, that should ease back a little bit and, and possibly drier and, and quite likely warmer than average for that second half of summer. Taswater is prioritising its supply for drinking water. A potential decision for authorities now, water restrictions for residential customers. We are working on solutions together and I can say that the government absolutely is uh, um, uh, looking for options here, one of which could be water restrictions in the Greater Hobart area to provide for more water supplies. Here on the Pooley Vineyard, they're looking at their own ways to save and recycle water, but it's not a solution for all producers hit by the sudden restrictions. We can control a lot of other things, but you know, Mother Nature throws a lot at us that we can't control. This afternoon, TAS Irrigation said progress is being made on accessing additional water. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. To developing news now and one of the state government's most contentious pieces of legislation is coming to a head. Parliament voting tonight on proposed laws to crack down on protesters. For the latest developments we cross live to our political reporter Michelle Wisby. Good evening Michelle. How are the laws progressing? Joe, as we go to air right now, the legislation is before the Parliament. This is the live feed from the House of Assembly, where members are about to divide and vote on the anti-protest laws. The government says it's designed to protect businesses and workers from trespass, threats and obstruction. But critics are worried it goes too far and would impede on political freedoms. As Parliament was working through the laws, the government gagged debate this afternoon, saying it was dragging on for too long. But this didn't go down well with opposition parties. This is the most disgusting the gag I've ever seen in this place. Shame. 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 So as you can see there, tensions were extremely high this afternoon and Joe will keep you up to date with any developments. A floral tribute has grown at a Blackman's Bay petrol station where a 41-year-old Taruna man was allegedly murdered on Sunday. Police say Reed William Ludwig was returning a hired trailer when a 16-year-old boy allegedly attacked him with a knife after a verbal altercation. The incident is sending shockwaves throughout the community. A youth has since been charged with murder. A 51-year-old motorcycle rider is in a serious but stable condition in hospital after colliding with a car in Devonport this morning. Police say the driver of the vehicle is at fault and is expected to be charged. On the intersection of David and Thomas Street, these tyre marks leave a lasting reminder of a crash which forced paramedics to rush a motorcycle rider to hospital. It appears that the blue Nissan and the Yamaha road bike collided at the intersection as a result of the driver of the Nissan failing to give way to the motorcyclist. 
Emergency services were quickly on the scene at 10.30 this morning to find the driver of the sedan shaken but uninjured. However, they held grave concerns for the 51-year-old motorcyclist. The motorcycle rider was transported to the Northwest Regional Hospital for treatment for serious head injuries. But late this afternoon, authorities received good news. Further information at hand is that the rider is now conscious and talking. Police say investigations into the crash are still ongoing, but it expects to charge the driver of the car for failing to give way. It wasn't the only crash emergency services were faced with today. Witnesses say an oncoming car slammed into the learner driver of this red car as he attempted to turn right at this notorious intersection. I believe this is a very dangerous intersection. There's yeah. been quite a few accidents there and I actually avoid turning right at that intersection for that reason. The learner, his supervisor, as well as the driver of the other vehicle were taken to hospital as a precaution. There are no injuries from that that are of a significant nature. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. In the midst of a tourism boom, the first of two new Bruni Island ferries is about to hit the water for the first time. While the government celebrated the milestone today, it faced another tough day in Parliament with the abilities of the new Emergency Management Minister put to the test. Adding the final touches to a new $7.5 million Bruni Island ferry. Ready to start sea trials tomorrow, it's one of two new vessels designed to keep up with rapidly growing demand. So I'll be able to load it quicker, get out of the wharf area, second vessel will come in, load, so there'll be a crisscross. Bruni also in the parliamentary spotlight. With our bushfire preparedness debated all week, the government questioned over resources available to fight a Christmas Eve blaze on the island last year. That left Bruni Island with just one small appliance from North Bruni to cover the island overnight. It is sheer luck that the wind conditions were favourable that night. The chain of command for Bruni Island was examined by the AFAC review. It is entirely proper, that chain of command. A tough day for the Emergency Management Minister Mark Shelton, supported by the government but others questioning his competence. Uh, this minister can't answer simple questions. He has been unable to explain with clarity and give us confidence that he knows his job. I will take my advice, Madam Speaker, from the experts, from the Chief Fire Officer. And the struggling health system did not escape debate. Labor saying elective surgery waiting lists are the highest they've ever been at almost 11,000. There are more referrals that are being made um, and of course the Tasmanian Health Service do need to manage that. But importantly, the waiting time that people experience when they're on a waiting list is significantly improved. A tumultuous end to the final question time of 2019. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. The state's prison workers have reignited their industrial action, with more than 80 officers walking off the job. They say they're fighting for better wages and conditions, following a recent scathing report into the struggling system. Flags held high and marching from the Risdon prison complex, shouting their demands. What do we want? Pay right. As these correctional officers signal their message for increased wages. It's insulting because what they've offered is 1.3% on the 1st of December, unlike the rest of the state government. They also have not brought us in line with uh, the rest of the state government and the wages that they're receiving. There's a new pay offer that's been presented just three days ago, which provides for increases of between, I think, 8.9% and 10%. Uh, very competitive with other states. So that is a shame and disappointing. I think we need to keep working together. A recent Auditor General report revealing lockdown hours have increased by 200,000 this year. We've got inmates um, three in a cell, which are locked down on numerous days on end. Uh, staff do their best to facilitate rubbish removal, um, feeding and medication. Staff say amid understaffing, they fear the government is planning to replace experienced officers with unskilled workers. When you're in that prison and something goes wrong, you need to be sure the person standing behind you is fully trained, not someone that's not going to be able to, uh, to protect your back while you're trying to protect inmates and keep the community safe. Ensuring that um, the Tasmanian Prison Service have the resources that they need to manage, 
That includes uh, more staff. It includes uh, securing a pay rise that will be acceptable to government and employees. The union plans to continue action over the next four weeks. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmanian News. A shed and three vehicles have been damaged in a small fire breakout on Hobart's eastern shore. Emergency crews were called to the grass fire on Rihanna Road at Montague Bay around lunchtime. Firefighters managed to stop the blaze spreading further. We have an update for you now on that situation in state parliament tonight. Controversial anti-protest laws have just passed through the lower house. The government and independent MP Madeleine Ogilvie joined forces only moments ago to push through the legislation. The Greens, Labor and Rebel Speaker Sue Hickey all voted against the proposed laws. It now goes to the upper house next year. Tasmanian wildlife rescuers are receiving some help with their mission. Wild Care is donating $40,000 to help prop up Bonnarong's Wildlife Rescue Service. It will go towards helping to run a 24-hour phone hotline. Over the last 12 months, it's been amazing to see the donations that people have made to Bonnarong. So a huge big thank you to everybody, whether they've donated $20 or some people have donated multiple thousands of dollars. So those little donations of $20 from someone who's, uh, who's used our services or uh, much bigger donations from companies that have seen the value, um, how they've added up to be able to fund, uh, fund that work is, is really impressive. The money will also help the service deal with rising costs and volunteer training. Wine lovers have a new tool to plan a weekend of vineyard visits with the release of this year's Tasmanian Wine Trails Guide. It provides maps and locations of vineyards and cellar doors across the state and also highlights complimentary activities in the area for local and interstate visitors restaurant and dining options, um, other produce, so uh, seafood or even other beverages, as well as accommodation and, and all of those sorts of things that people might want to do and experience while they're here in Tasmania. You can pick up a copy from tourism outlets or online via Wine Tasmania's website. With the Christmas season just around the corner, our furry family members will have the chance to meet the man in red early this weekend. Santa Paws is offering to take photos with beloved pets at Saturday's Salamanca Market to raise valuable funds for the RSPCA. Well the funds are really important because people sort of forget about the RSPCA at this time of the year. There's a lot of other things distracting them and we need to keep the money coming in because we are really struggling. The Hobart City Council says all critters, great and small, are welcome but must be on leads or in carriers. Two groups of cycling enthusiasts are pedalling across the state to help Tasmanians with disabilities. The Tasmania Police Charity Trust bike ride and the St Giles Charity Ride both kicking off today. Tasmanian streets have had an influx of road users, with cyclists pedalling for a good cause. Team Mali and Nira pushed off this morning with plans to circumnavigate the state in eight days. Cyclists and support staff flying in from across Australia and as far as Italy to raise funds for children's disability services at St Giles in Launceston. St Giles here in this organisation, it does fantastic work uh, for, the, for, the, for the community. Um, I'm, just, I'm just blown away by the quality of care, the, the thoughtfulness that goes into the work that they do. The team hopes to raise $10,000 with the cycling event to become a calendar staple. Funds through events like this enable us to actually trial and test new programs that are um, for the people that have the additional needs that require services. In Deloraine, nearly 70 sets of legs donned lycra for the 13th Tasmania Police Charity Trust bike ride. The police will be riding a gruelling 410 kilometres in an effort to raise $50,000 for Down Syndrome Tasmania and Muscular Dystrophy Tasmania. I can guarantee that every police officer at one stage was asked why they wanted to be a police officer and they said, I want to help people. And that's what we do. So we use the Tasmania Police Charity Trust as a tool for us to raise money for disadvantaged Tasmanians. Both teams are set to reach the end of their ride on Saturday. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian draft prospect Mitch O'Neill will find out tonight if he's heading to an AFL club after missing out in last night's first round of selections. Matt Rowell is 2019's number one draft pick after being snapped up by the Gold Coast Suns. 
it's pure joy and excitement for me um, of what this opportunity brings and um, I'm just super excited and can't wait to get into everything. Noah Anderson was taken by the Suns with pick two. Luke Jackson, Lachlan Ash and Dylan Stevens rounded out the top five. Port Adelaide kicks off tonight's selections with pick 22. New national selector George Bailey has confirmed he'll quit first class cricket after this big bash season. He's already hinting at what type of player he's looking for when he becomes a commanding voice in Aussie cricket. The transition from player to national selector will overlap for just this summer. George Bailey will play the next two Sheffield Shield games and the Big Bash season before waving the willow goodbye. Very much enjoyed uh, the journey to the top level and playing cricket for as long as I have, but I'll be, um, I'm certainly more excited about what lies on, on the other side of the fence now. It'll mark the end of a first-class career which began in 2002. Beyond my dreams this year to, uh, to be playing senior cricket, I was looking to play a bit of second living cricket and that was it. The 37-year-old has no illusions about the challenge ahead, especially if the futures of fellow Tasmanians Matthew Wade or Tim Payne ever come across his desk. There are difficult conversations that will be had. Like any um, player, you just you work through those things, um, you know, hopefully together at, at the appropriate times. To be selected under Bailey's watch, players may need more than just wickets and runs. Character will also hold currency. Being a good person, um, being able to help your mates um, when you're not doing so well, um, being able to celebrate other success, all those things are, are important as well as obviously being able to perform. Bailey will be under Jordan Silk's captaincy in tomorrow's Sheffield Shield game against Queensland. It'll be Silk's 50th first class match and his debut as skipper of the Shield side. To lead a group of guys um, that I've become really close mates with over the journey is, is actually really special. It'll be a tough test. Uh, we love playing in our own conditions and, and look forward to, to playing them um, as well as we have in the past. Suspended Hobart Hurricanes cricketer Emily Smith won't play for another three months but may not find herself out of pocket. The wicketkeeper has reportedly been offered a paid internship with Australian Cricket's Players Union. The union may help the 24-year-old contest the three-month ban she received for posting a team lineup to social media in the hours before it was officially released. A two-time winner of the Hobart International is coming back for next year's tournament. Elise Mertens won back-to-back -back singles titles in 2017 and 18, along with the doubles crown in 2018. The 24-year-old Belgian says she has wonderful memories of the tournament and can't wait to return. And Launceston's Rebecca Van Ash has guided Australia to a clean sweep of the Trans-Tasman Test Series in Lawn Bowls. In the pairs, the Tasmanian bowled with Lindsay Clark to defeat New Zealand 12 ends to 9. It was her 250th cap for the Jackaroo. Good evening. Apart from some cloud over the east, it was a mostly fine sunny day today. Hobart 21, Launceston our highest with 22, Burnie 20 and Devonport 19. No significant rain today, but in the previous 24 hours, 83 millimetres fell at Mount Reed to 9 o'clock this morning. Friendly beaches 21 degrees, Ooze 19, St Helens Grove and Flinders Island 18, Lowhead 17, King Island 16 and Strawn 15 degrees. Low level cloud today over the south and east, a little high cloud drifted over the north later on. More patchy cloud is over central Australia and the top end. Thunderstorm cloud over inland parts of Queensland and Western Australia. Tomorrow, that low over Bass Strait connects to a trough over the mainland. A high pressure ridge develops over southern WA. The winds turning from variable to be more southwest to northwest and up to 20 knots tomorrow, particularly over the north and east. Lighter winds inland and swells at 3 metres in western and southern waters. Friday in Hobart, a few showers increasing late in the day, 18 the top, same sort of forecast for Hewenville and 19 the top for Campania. Launceston fine and partly cloudy, 21 the high, 18 for Devonport, partly cloudy for Georgetown. Burnie, a top tomorrow of 18 with a cloudy day, partly cloudy for Strawn on 16, 19 for Wynyard. St Helens, a shower or two, mainly later, a top of 20, 19 for Swansea. Early and late showers for Port Arthur and 15 degrees. UV very high, sitting at 9 and 10. To the weekend and on Saturday, uh, showers across the state developing over the east early and then right across the state by late on Saturday afternoon. On Sunday, more showers extending statewide once again. And on Monday, we'll see some more showers and even snow down to 600 metres. Further north tomorrow, a sunny day in Perth. Uh, for Adelaide, 22 degrees and a chance of showers. Showers also for Melbourne, fine and cloudy for Sydney and Brisbane.
Mostly cloudy and 16 over Hobart, bit of cloud over Launceston as well, 17 at the moment and 15 degrees in Devonport. And Joe tonight is doing the old something new, something old thing, everybody. Uh, her daughter Lily's back and she's wearing Lily's earrings and she's coupled that with her great aunt's old frock. Good to see that you've got the family involved, Joe. <laughs> if you're not pulled off air for that, I don't know what will happen. Go home, Murph. Thank you very much. That's all from us for now. We'll see you a bit later. <laughs> Bye. She's, 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 she